Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lou S. Uh, this is the first book in his space trilogy, which we will get to all three of them eventually. Uh, so it starts out uh, with Dr. Elwin Ransom, who is a professor at Cambridge University, who is taking a year-long sabbatical to complete walking around England. And um, he was looking for a place to stay one night, and he'd come across a house inhabited by an old schoolmate named Devin and another scientist named Dr. Weston. What's the plan? He interrupts these people from trying to restrain a young man named Harry who he was on a mission to retrieve from what his mother wasn't yeah. it after yeah. serving ransom her. a drugged drink Weston and Devon abduct him instead of Harry and bring him aboard a spaceship bound for the planet Malacandra yes ransom is presented to the Sorns as a would be human sacrifice yes. uh, despite his uh, grim intended fate ransom has a transformative spiritual experience during the month long fight realizing that space is not the cold abyss but a bright sea of life akin to the heavens yes uh, after landing on Malacandra, Weston and Devon attempt to turn Ransom over to the humanoid Sorns, but Ransom breaks free and flees into a forest landscape called the Handramet, right? Handramet. Handramet. Yes. As he wanders the surface of the unfamiliar planet, he meets Hoy, a member of an intelligent seal like species called the Harasa. Hoy's ability of distinct languages enable Ransom to overcome his initial fear of the Harass's unfamiliar body, and he befriends Hoy. Am I saying that right? Hoy? So far as I know. <laughs> spending several weeks in his village among the other Harassa. Although Ransom initially assumes that the Harassan culture is primitive, he discovers that they are skilled at several crafts, and they follow a peaceful religion that unites all the creatures of Malacandra. Yes. Anything you want to add here? I don't know. C.S. Lewis is good at describing things. Especially yeah, uh, the planet. It was um, on and off boring and then interesting and then boring again and then interesting when uh, he went and talked to uh, the spiritual guy. How do you say his name? Uh, the Oyarsa. The Oyarsa. Yeah. While he is with the Harasa, Ransom learns that Malacandra's spiritual ruler, Oryasa, is the greatest of a group of angelic creatures called the um, LD, the, what, LD, uh, the Eldine. Eldine. Uh, Oryasa? Oryasa. Oryasa serves two higher powers known as Meleldale, the young, and the old one. A Christ-like and God-like figure, respectively. Uh, each planet in the solar system has an Oryarsa except Earth, which is consequently known as Thulchandra, or the Silent Planet, which is where Ransom is from, giving the title of the book out of the Silent Planet, because that's where he gets from. Yes. Ransom also learns about the concept of now a label covering corporeal and rational creatures like Harasa, Saroni, which is the plural form of the word Sorns, and another species called Fifletrigi. Fifletrigi. Yep. Humans are also now. The now of Malacandra all live in harmony under Oryarsa's rule, with no one species considered supreme. So. Right off the bat, Malacandra is incredibly different from base. <laughs> yes. It has Which hot is, water. Yes. It's a, it's a huge, huge, like, seeing this, I remember it was talking about Ransom when he first met the, um, the, what, the Harasa, yeah. when he first met, you know, got with them, he was trying to figure out which, which, um, species was the, uh, the ruler or the the alpha yeah 
remember he was talking about that because he was so used you know to earth someone was on top of the food chain but here under Arash's rule all all are equal must focus yeah uh, um after about a month after his arrival on Malakandra, Ransom sets out on a hunting expedition with Harasa to capture a reptilian creature called a Nakra. While aboard a boat with Hoy and other Harasai and Eldil, El, what? Eldil. Eldil appears with a message for Ransom. The Eldil instructs him to meet with Harasa at a place called Meldilorn. Yeah, sure. But Ransom ignores the summons so that the hunt can continue. Right there. Uh, very American of him, even yes. though he's English. Very human of him. Yeah, very. Yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do this. That's their hunting cool. party. Give me five minutes. Yeah, yeah, give five more minutes, please. Right there. Their hunting party manages to kill the Hanakra, but as they sell as they celebrate on shore, Hoy is shot and killed by Weston and Devon. Yes. Understanding that Hyoi's death is a consequence of his own refusal to obey the summons, Ransom reluctantly begins his journey to Meldilorn, which takes him out of the forest and into the highlands of Malakandra, known as the Harandra. Yeah. He is helped along the way by a sorn named Augre. Right? Is that right? Sure. <laughs> Who provides him with an oxygen mask to combat the thin air of the highlands and carries him to the paradisical island of Meldilorn. At Meldilorn, Ransom finds many stones engraved with complex storytelling scenes by the artistic Fifletrigi. Fifletrigi. Fifletrigi, which actually starts with a P. That's why I needed yeah. help. <laughs> with the pronunciation because I read it I and you listened it. to it. Yeah, uh, let me spell it out for you real quick. P-F-I-F-L-T-R-I-G-G-I. -G -G -I. So it was very weird looking at that word. Yeah, the dwarf. Though examining the etchings, Ransom discerned that Malacandra is in fact the planet Mars. Yes. Ransom is soon called to meet Orasa who appears before him as a wavering figure of light. He assures Ransom that he means no harm and only wants to know the motive behind Ransom's journey to Malacandra. Orasa, which I am saying different every time I say it, mm -hmm. <sighs> explains why Earth is known as the Silent Planet, that long ago Earth had a powerful Orasa, <laughs> but he became bent or evil, which is their word for evil because they really don't have a word for it. As a result, the Old One confined the Bent One to Earth and sent Maleldeal to battle for control of humanity. While the battle now continues, Earth is shut out of the rest of the universe. The Bent One's influence has corrupted humanity, making all humans bent by nature. Right there. A party of Horas arrives with Weston and Devon, who killed two more Horas during their capture. Oras <laughs> Say it again, Joe. Oh, you are um, soon? Oyarsu addresses this. There's Oyarsa oh. and then there's Oyarsu. Oyarsu, I believe, is the plural. A singular is okay, an Oyarsa. O Oyarsa yes. addresses them, but Weston, unable to believe him, or unable to see him, believes that one of the nearby Hanau must be performing ventriloquism. Assuming that the Hanau of Malacandra are primitive creatures, Weston unsuccessfully attempts to scare and bribe them into letting him go before finally accepting that Oyarsa is real. When questioned about his motives for coming to Malacandra, Devon admits that he only cares about leeching Malacandra's abundant supply of gold. Faced with the same question, Weston gives a lengthy speech about superiority of humans outlining his glow goal of colonizing every planet in the solar system so that humanity may live on forever oyarsa counters this that it is not malel deals way for things to live forever a truth that allows the hanau of melacandra to live in peace so um west in here is essentially put in front of a god of this planet <laughs> yes, and sir. he uh basically says 
um, I will kill you and we will colonize your planet. <laughs> yes. And then once this planet is done, we will colonize the next planet and the next planet and the next planet. So uh, Weston is very gutsy for doing that. Wow. After hearing out of all three men, Oyarsus deems Weston and Devon irredeemable and orders them to return to Earth. He offers Ransom the option of staying on Malacandra, but Ransom eventually decides to return with Weston and Devon. After a perilous voyage to Earth, Ransom initially stays quiet about his experience on Malacandra, fearing retribution from Weston. He only breaks his silence after he is contacted by the narrator of the book, revealed to be C.S. Lewis himself and a former student of Ransom's. Lewis writes him asking about the definition of the word Oyarses is found in the ancient platonic text. Ransom then reveals the story of his journey to Lewis and the two men write out of a silent planet as a way to familiarize the public with Ransom's story in the platable form of a novel. They hope that planting the seeds of the Malachondrian ideas in humanity will prove useful in the ongoing battle between the Meleldi and the Bent One. So, yeah, that is the whole summary of the book. Yeah. So, thoughts? Pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, I like C.S. Lewis. He's good at what uh, he Yeah, he, he's really good at um, describing stuff, like you were saying yeah. earlier, without, without killing off imagination in the process. Yeah. Uh, especially in something like this, where you have to basically imagine what they look like because he says oh it looks as close as this as the human mind can understand so yeah. in your mind you're trying to put that together and see what it looks like yourself i thought it was interesting how at the end of the book when they were making it to seem like you know this actually happened and they were writing this as a way to like you know Make yeah. it seem like it was real or something. Yeah. Um, definitely uh, seems to have some sort of um, Christian overtones, but that's most C.S. Lewis. Yeah, what do you expect? All. This is after he became a Christian. Oh, was it? Yeah. I would like to read some of the stuff before, too, just to see the differences in them. I don't know that he wrote a lot of novels beforehand. Probably not. You could go through uh, until we have faces. It looks dangerous. Yeah. Which doesn't play into Christianity at all. It's not right. Like this. But that's probably the only thing that you could deal with. <laughs> yeah, everything else yeah. is probably like lectures and scientific <laughs> studies and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, that is book one of the Space Trilogy by... The Ransom Trilogy. Yes. The Ransom Trilogy, Space Trilogy, whatever. Um, it was very... It was a very... I thought it was a good read. It's a short read. It was yes. only like 170-something pages. Uh, what do you think? I don't know. I like him. He's smart. He also made his hero a 40-year-old man and didn't try to make him uh, have a relationship with a 13-year-old girl, so that's nice. True, true. The one thing that I liked that really stuck out to me was that when Weston was uh, talking to o Oyarsu, Oyarsa, yeah. uh, and then he, he switched from speaking their native language, which he was able to, you know, learn. He learned a very, little bit of old soldier. Yeah. Right? Not as much as Ransom learned, but then again, Weston didn't spend much time with him. Weston also wasn't a philologist. Like right, Ransom. so when Weston switched from their language to English, it was actually a very, like, like, like he wasn't stupid. Like, it, like in a typical book, the, yeah. the, the protagonist, or the antagonist always is said to be stupid, like... But if you go and read Weston's um, argument toward the Aras Oyarsa, it's very well put together, and it's and and the fact that he was able to figure out some of their language is also pretty good. Weston is a smart guy. He just really like, digs evolution. 
Yeah, and then he was like, really like, yeah, we'll kill you and take your planet. And yeah. Oyarsa was like, yeah, get out of here. Uh, there is alcohol mentioned in this book, trigger warning. Yeah. At the very end. Baptist, don't middle. read. 